Today's video is gonna be about sound. Sound is so crucial to anything you're filming. Whether you're doing a sketch, a tutorial, a demo, if you don't have good sound, people aren't gonna watch it. So these are my three ways that I've recorded sound when I'm filming sketches. Check it out. Today, the person that's gonna help me demonstrate is one of my favorite collaborators, someone I know very well. It's a Mr. Michael Henry. Okay, well there we go. First off, let's go over the way I generally record sound. It's with a shotgun microphone. The mic I use is a Sennheiser ME66 shotgun mic, and this is a mic I've had for about six years. This mic has gotten me through a lot. I've probably filmed about 80% of my sketches with it. This mic is a directional shotgun condenser mic that is designed to pick up higher frequencies, which means voices, dialogue, scripted type content. It's not great when you're recording music with it or big booms and stuff like that. So I wouldn't use it for maybe big events, uh, big recording events. But if you're shooting scripted content, this is a mic you wanna look into. Now this is a mic that records either front focused or multi-directional. So you could record it from the sides of the mic, um, all ports if you're trying to get ambient, you know, room tone sounds, or you could record it from the front. Generally I do a front focus setting of the mic because then I know that it's going directly to a subject or an actor. Uh, if you've seen my sketches before, you know that I film outside a lot. And in that case, I don't want all the cars, the planes, the lawnmowers, all that stuff being recorded onto the audio. So I try to make sure that it's a front focus setting. The way I use this mic is uh, I record it separately from the video, which means I have to do some syncing in uh, post-production, which isn't very uncommon, but um, it is a little extra legwork at the back end, especially if you're new to filmmaking. The good thing is most editing software these days has settings and functions to sync your audio and video for you. So it's really easy, as long as you're keeping track of the tracks, it's really easy in post to kind of make sure everything syncs up properly. Now, since I don't attach it to the top of my camera, this is my setup. Uh, so this is my usual setup. Uh, as you can see, the mic is about like, you know, three feet away from Michael at a distance. Normally I would be uh, behind the camera because I usually do handheld filming. But right now, just for demonstration purposes, I have it on the tripod. You won't be able to see the mic in the frame, uh, but it will pick up some pretty good audio because it's close enough. Uh, so let's take a look at what the footage looks like. So today I thought that we could play a little game. Uh, never have I ever. I figured it would be a good way to maybe see what Paul's personality is really like. Has he been to Cancun? Has he worn a wig? What does he really think about America? We'll find out. The good thing with this setup is you do have the flexibility to kind of move the stand wherever you'd like. Um, you know, if it's a close up, I can move it right up there and I get some great audio. If it's a wide shot, then generally I have to do some ADR and I won't get some clean audio. So it really depends on where you're recording and what kind of shots you're getting for the clarity of audio. Uh, but just know um, this mic does pick up a, a pretty good range and sole focus, so it should be able to record pretty well for you. For this setup, a couple must-have accessories that you really can't do this setup without. Uh, you need a recorder. The recorder I use is an H4N Zoom recorder. It's super handy. I've had it for about six years now. Uh, the one thing with this recorder is you really need to get batteries for it. So maybe look into getting uh, rechargeable batteries is what I do. I have about six rechargeable batteries that I just kind of charge up after each shoot and then they're good to go for the next shoot. You know, it saves some money and it's good for the environment. It's a win-win. For this, you'll need a memory card. The memory card for this, I use a 16 gigabyte memory card. Um, you can usually get them generally at any store, CVS or Rite Aid. Uh, to obviously record your sound. Then you need an XLR cable. I would recommend getting a 25 foot XLR cable. That'll give you the flexibility to move the recorder away from the mic. And lastly, you'll need a mic stand or a boom pole. A boom pole would be ideal, but that would mean that you have uh, people helping you with it. Now I would always, always, always recommend if you have a friend, if you have an extra body, if you know somebody else that is, you know, knows a little bit about sound, that's willing to help you, to have someone run your sound for you. They would monitor it, they would you know, move with the subject as the subject is moving. You know, you've seen them before, they're the guys on set that are holding that big boom pole over their heads, you know, following the actors. Um, it's super crucial if you are able to have that. But if you're not able to and you wanna film now, using a stand is a great alternative. But the one thing I recommend when you're using a stand is you check the audio right off the bat, you check it after the first take, and probably periodically throughout your shoot, just jump back on the zoom and listen to your audio and maybe check it, you know, check the previous take. But it's kind of, you know, the pros and cons. If you're trying to film content quick and you're trying to film it now, 
you know, something you have to work with if you don't always have the extra bodies to help you out. Now when all of that is set up, I check all my equipment, make sure it's good to go, and I start filming. So why don't we check back with Michael and play a little game and see how all this sounds. Never have I ever um, been to Mexico. Oh, gotta put a finger down. Okay. I have to put a finger down. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I ask you now and then. Okay, ask me. Yeah. Never have I ever eaten at Arby's. I have. You have? Hell yeah. I've had their roast beef. If the actor moves or adjusts themselves throughout the frame, you will have distant audio or the audio won't sound consistent because you're obviously not following them. If you have a person to help you, that won't be the case. But if you're using the stand, then yes, the audio won't sound consistent. And that is where ADR would take place. So here's an example where Michael's walking away, but I'm using a line from when he's sitting in front of the camera. Let's see if you can tell the difference. Never have I ever driven a minivan across state lines. See, it's not bad, right? So worst case scenario, always look into those options where you record the audio after the fact, and maybe you could deadline over what the actor was saying. But the more you do it, the more you use it, the more you practice with it, the better you'll get. So the next mic we're gonna talk about is the Rode VideoMic Pro. This mic comes with a lot of beginner bundles. This mic is also a directional condenser mic where you can do front focus in all different angles. It's also great if you're just starting out because it records the audio directly to the video. So no syncing and post-production needed. Also, this is a great mic if you're kind of on the go or if you're filming documentaries or you wanna do a walk and talk because it will get you some great sound if you're up close and personal. From my experience of using this mic, it doesn't quite sound as clear as the shotgun mic that I presented earlier, but with the functions of this mic and the capabilities that you don't have to sync it later on, and it will record much better sound than your camera mic will. The one issue with this is if you're stepping back any further than maybe three, four, or five feet away, you really aren't gonna get good sound. So then in that case, you might have to do a lot of the ADR like I talked about earlier. Now let's go back to Never Have I Ever and see how it sounds when Michael's talking. Never have I ever um, worn a G-string. I haven't. I have not had the opportunity, even though I've thought about it. So it's not off the table. <laughs> Never have I ever um, been to uh, a, a baseball game and had like the number of the team player I want on my face. I haven't quite done that, but I've uh, painted my face for a football game. Blue? It was uh, gold. Oh, what team? It was for uh, Colorado Buffaloes. I was a buffalo. Never even heard of them. Never have I ever uh, been to Tijuana. I have actually. It's pretty, it was a wild story. I'll have to get into that. Until the next time behind the sketch. <laughs> That's on your Patreon. <laughs> for what it costs and for, you know, if you're a beginner filmmaker, this is a great, great, great uh, add-on to any camera or any setup because it's really gonna get you much better sound than the onboard camera sound would get you. There's actually a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus that has some different functions, capabilities, and some higher quality sound. So maybe uh, you look into that as well. And lastly, the way I record audio is with a lav mic. The lav mic is what I'm wearing right now. It's something that a lot of people wear for documentaries, for interviews. So there's two ways you can wear a lav mic. Obviously out in the open, or you could hide it if you're shooting a sketch or a short. So for lav mics, there's literally lav mics that you could buy for $30 that you can connect to your phone and it's really easy to use. Or you could buy a lav mic that's, you know, like $15,000. Really look at what you need. You don't always need that high-end one. You could probably get a really good lav mic for a low cost, which I'll link below a few of the ones that I'm interested in. The one I started using is the Ceramonic Blink 500 V4. This setup goes for about two, $240, and with this setup you get two lav mics, so you can record two subjects at once. Now saying this, I don't really use lav mics that often when I'm filming a sketch, because I find that the shotgun mic records a little bit better for what I need it for, but using a lav mic has been really beneficial the times I have. And it's good if you're dealing with multiple subjects and subjects that are far away. So definitely look into lav mics as an alternative to the shotgun mic, especially if you're shooting things on the go a lot. We'll do one over the shirt and then we'll do one that's hidden in the shirt and see if you can tell the difference. When I was seven years old, I took a pipe cleaner and stuck it in an outlet and it exploded and uh, short circuited the whole house. When I was seven years old, I took a pipe cleaner and stuck it in an electrical outlet in my house and it exploded and short-circuited the whole house. 
them. So I'm a bad girl. So if you decide to hide it in the shirt, just keep in mind that there is a chance with the person moving around, a shirt, a jacket, or sweatshirt, or whatever they're wearing, it will affect the audio, which is another reason why I don't really like using the lavalier mic set up too much, especially if you're hiding it in a subject. But obviously practice. Each one of these things you wanna practice. When I first got all this sound equipment, I went on the street, I recorded myself, I recorded myself in a room, I recorded myself in different areas, so I really kind of gauge what it would sound like in different rooms and different areas. And there's hundreds of mic setups out there, so don't be shy to kind of just really do your research and check out what works best for you and what things you need it for. So just remember, getting good sound is 50% of the battle. If you don't have good sound, you don't have much of a video or a sketch. So take your time, really monitor it, check back after the takes, and make sure you get good, clean sound. Any final words? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the world. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps out with the algorithm. And share with your friends. What's happening anymore?